What a great day, and what a great two days, in fact, and three. In fact, we had a welcoming dinner with the uh, president's team, and then we had uh, a great day yesterday. I thought uh, uh, I was just thrilled, and then to, today, the sea of green Beautiful, beautiful, and so I can't wait to hear what I've got to say. <laughs> There's some truth to that, uh, you know, because uh, I I don't uh, I don't draw out a whole set of notes and and. Uh, and then follow them and memorize things and everything. I've, I don't operate that way. I just sort of speak about what's on my heart. And so, uh, how much time do I have today, Marco? <laughs> what? How many? Want, how much? Twelve minutes. Okay. I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to set the timer here because, you know, I don't want to uh, go over. And, uh, oh. We'll start right there. Okay. Um, I'm going to talk about, you know, the business, of course. And I'm going to talk a little bit about... Uh, um, why I feel that uh, being a part of this business, Neo Life today, in this particular time that we live in, is more relevant and more important uh, than ever, ever before. And uh, the reason that I'm uh, uh, that I'm going to talk about that is that there are uh, people are struggling right around the world. And as a result of that, those struggles, uh, there's uh, uh, people don't, and we're facing even more difficult times uh, in the future. And, and I'll just give you uh, uh, some idea of, of what I'm talking about. There's a, uh, there's a very smart man, his name is Alec Ross, and He's written a book uh, that, uh, about the trends, what's happening. And one of, the, one of the, the statistics that he quotes is that, uh, and, and when I say economics around the world and our, our, our particular uh, uh, financial situation that every country in, and then a thing called the global economy, every place in the world people are struggling today. And <clears throat> let me tell you about what's causing some of this. You see the uh, interest rates have never been lower around the world. And you see that, uh, you see countries are individually are lowering their, their uh, interest rates down. Japan is negative now. That means if you put money in the bank in Japan, you pay the bank to keep your money, okay? Uh, the U.S. is very close to that mark. It's just a little bit above zero interest rates. Uh, you see where the uh, where Europe is going. The the uh, currency there is going to a the euro to a, uh, a zero rate. And what this means is that people who have saved money in in been encouraged over the lifetime to put money into bonds and into savings accounts and and things called fixed income. That's mean you've worked hard all your life, you've put money in the bank or into uh, very safe investments, and then you get no return on those investments. No matter how much money you would have in the bank in Japan, you wouldn't get any income off of it, okay? Because you're paying the bank to keep the money. Uh, and for the longest time, even the return on, 
on government bonds, which is a safe thing. The whole government has to fail before the bond fails. But if you have, in the U.S., if you had uh, $100,000 in the bank, you would get one or $2,000 a year off of that. That's all. And if you had a million dollars in the bank, you would get 10000 or 20000 per year. And so what's happened is people who are older now have, uh, we've gone through these recessions. We've just been through a, a terrible recession in the United States. Europe is all in a recession. Uh, I know reading about South Africa and most of Africa, uh, you have recessionary economies. And this is true right around the world. <clears throat> and in these economies, uh, People who thought they could retire, who may be saved, who had a, did, did what they thought was the right thing, they're ending up now going back into the workforce because, uh, and, and it's, it's driving out, it's, in the U.S. right now, the government will tell us that, uh, un, that employment is up, that unemployment is down. But if you look closely, that is a, 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 just a tricky way of accounting because the people who have gone back to work, older people in the workforce, instead of making their 30, 40, 50, 60 thousand dollars a year or more, they're now working at McDonald's and they're doing a very low paying job. So they're underemployed. And that's counted as someone who is employed. Now, the reason I, I take time to point that out is because what's happened, <clears throat> what's happened to us is that, uh, uh, is that where we start looking for a safe place, a safe place to be. And for example, just to give you a, a calculation, if you have a business, a small business, and since we are talking about neo-life business, if that business makes you $1,000 a month, and you can convert that to rand, or that would be what, about 15,000 rand per month, then that would be equal to having $1.2 million in the bank in most, most places in the world. And so you can see that you can live your life uh, in, a, in a better style with more income off of a small business than you can by having a bunch of money in the bank. And by the way, it's difficult to get that money in the bank, as we all know. Now, here's some, here's some numbers that... Uh, in fact, in a recent, the most recent uh, lifestyle, I, uh, in my article there, that uh, um, I, I quoted that 63, 65%, I believe it is, 65%, I'd have to go back and read the article, but uh, again, but 55, 65% of people in the U.S., and the U.S. is considered to be one of the better economies, I can tell you that uh, it's on shaky ground because 65% of the people, if they were to have an auto repair bill of $500, they wouldn't be able to cover it, okay, unless they took on more debt through their credit card or something which puts you farther behind. In other words, they don't have the $500 cash extra in their budget to cover the, the auto bill the auto repair bill. Now that's a sad state. You take that on up and you look at what's happening to people as they retire and it, the number goes really high. It's up close to 90% of the people do not have enough income or, or assets at age 65, okay, and they have to rely on government payout or family to sustain themselves. So 
What that means is that our educational system in the U.S., and it's around the world and some places worse, is it's not training people and focusing them on the right path. You could go get educated, go through grades, you know, 1 through 12, get some college, get some whatever. At the end of that day, the things that we've been trained, are we training to do or being trained to do, they're not delivering the promised land. That if you do these things and get that job and work for a solid company, that you're going to end up and we're going to end up being able to retire uh, with dignity. So that's not happening. In fact, uh, this book by Alec Ross, he points out that, uh, that uh, um, he says 65% uh, of children that are entering the educational system today, okay, are being trained for jobs by the time they finish school that will no longer exist. Now that's, uh, how about that? And I saw in the newspaper when I'm coming over here, I saw where they're experimenting with the McDonald's that uh, you walk up to a display on a, on a screen and this screen then, you, there's nobody waiting on you. You say, a, a face says, hello, you punch, you want a Big Mac. Uh, would you like fries? You punch yes, and you punch that, and you put your card in the deal, and the order goes back, and uh, they're automating those jobs, okay? Now, that automation has already taken place in the automotive industry. Uh, it's taking place in so many of our jobs, and the technology, as we get more technology, and we're in a technology-driven world right now, then what's that hap what happens to the human uh, uh, face and the human participation and those jobs that are, are required for humans to live? And so I think this is getting uh, more serious all the time. In fact, uh, Kendra and myself and Susan, we were at a nice home of the founder of Sun Microsystems about a week ago, okay? And uh, he has four boys, they're clean-cut looking boys. And uh, so we were there having a, a dinner and a, and a few things and talking, and, uh, and his name is Scott McNeely, okay? He was the founder and CEO of Sun Microsystems. He is encouraging and trying, he's telling his four boys do not go to university because it's going to be a waste of time. Now, their peer group and everybody else is telling these boys, and he's a very bright man, but he's saying, You've got, we've got to figure out a way to educate you for the future because the present system will not do that. You'll go through that system, you'll dump out the other end, and you won't be prepared. Now, does anybody relate to that at all? I mean, uh, th these are the situations. Now, so, uh, I've, I'm so thankful that I myself got introduced to this business qu quite by accident and that the various things that I've been asked to do, uh, and that is learn about products, take the products, uh, learn about the business, study the business, uh, that uh, teaching me more about how I can help people, uh, improving myself, uh, my ability to think positive, to set goals, to, uh, you know, we talk about our why. Well, our why, why we do something, why we're here, why we, it's made up of a set of goals that uh, I, would, I want some goals, I want to have a better life, I want some things, and, and all those goals make up, that's the why that we do it. I think there are so many reasons today because if you can build, if you can build a business here in Neolife, uh, you can, you and your family can bypass 
those terrible things that I've just been talking about. You can bypass them. And yes, there's, there's some things you have to do, but if we analyze what those things are, um, then, then we're able to answer our own question of can I do it? I think it boils down to uh, the reason that most people don't attempt uh, or don't stay with something is for some reason they think maybe they can't do it. Now they think that is because some, most, a lot of times I've heard, I don't have enough education to do it. Well, I'll tell you, education is not the answer, okay? This business, as I pointed out yesterday, will educate us. You know, you will become educated about products, educated about taking care of your health, educated about, uh, uh, about business, you know, how to, how to take care of your monies, how to open up a bank account, how to, that's your product, your bank account for your business, how to, to sort out the income and the payouts. And so that process, you, no matter where you start, you will become educated just by practicing these various uh, disciplines. And then, of course, we become naturally more capable as we practice doing the things that are required. So what do we have to know how to do? Well, we have to, first of all, I believe we have to want to help other people. I think that's a basic thing because if we think of ourselves only and what we're going to get and we go out with that, do something because I'm going to make more money, uh, for some reason uh, God made us so that <clears throat> what, you know, what we are speaks much louder than what we're saying, okay? Who we are. Uh, it's, it's called nonverbal communication, and it, it, everybody has it, everybody reacts to it, and probably it represents maybe 85% of how we communicate. For example, we can meet a person, uh, and uh, they don't have to say, they would listen to them talk just for a few minutes, and we will say, you know, there's something about that person that I feel good about, and I trust that person. And we have no reason to trust. We don't know enough about them yet, but we know there's something about that person that their heart is pure, their intentions are good, and, and we feel good about it. Now, the opposite is true. We can know very little about somebody. They can say just a few words, or we look at the body language, whatever. Non-verbally, we say, I don't know what it is, but I, f I don't like that person. I don't feel good about them person, you know? Animals sense that, you know. Animal, a, a dog can tell whether or not you're afraid of it just because of your, uh, non, the nonverbal communication between you and that animal. And we as human beings, we react to that. Well, you know what we have to do is we have to say to ourselves, I want to help somebody. We have to mean it. We have to be willing to help people around us in little things every day, whoever we run into and, and whoever's a part of our life. And then when we feel that way, we know then that our products will benefit. You've heard all the testimonies. We know that our business will benefit. You've heard those testimonies. In fact, you don't really have to have faith to know that you can do this. Faith is is believing before you see the proof. You see the proof. You see people who just started out and they're making progress in the business and their health has improved in some way and their uh, financial situation has improved in some way. You see it. You see people who've been in the business over 40 years and their income streams are still streaming and they're uh, they pick up more and more uh, income as they go along. And then you see the very beautiful presentation you saw uh, here with Alta in the home care and uh, talking, you know, with, uh, you know, and just doing that and how simple that process is. So you ask yourself, do I care about people? Could I learn to do that demonstration? 
Could I ask somebody if I could do it? Could I tell them then that, you know, you should get in here. You'd probably be a lot better than me at it. And there's a few little principles that, that uh, in that last article that I wrote that I'll touch on lightly today, but you know what? Uh, oh, by the way, I have to tell you that, uh, you know, I come up with some ideas, ideas, but uh, if you notice that my, my uh, letters in the, in the lifestyle are a lot better in the last couple years. Have you noticed? Okay. Would you guess who's writing those uh, along with me and uh, uh, Kendra? That's right. <laughs> so when I go, you, you know, I will be writing letters beyond the grave. I want you to know that. If, uh, <laughs> no, I, I, she'll tell you. I give her the ideas, I, and I tell, I, I, she picks it up off my talks and various other things and discussion, and then she gets together and she, she writes it. She writes it. I can't write that beautiful. I can't write it, but I, uh, but I can refer back to it. But I do feel guilty because, you know, people come up to me and tell me how, how beautiful that my, these messages are and how well they're written. And I feel so guilty. I, just, I can't just say thank you, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and you, now, you, I'll tell you, you can't all go to Kendra to get your letters written, okay? Now, that, that won't, you know, she's busy, okay? She's busy, and I'm her father, okay? Don't forget that. <laughs> now, let, let's talk about this a little bit because uh, I'm, I'm worried about the future for most, most people. Just think about kids going, millions of kids around the world going into uh, the school system being trained. There's a total disconnect between what's happening in the real world and our educational system. Would you agree to that? You agree to that? In fact, in fact, uh, I, I think it needs a complete overhaul, complete overhaul uh, to be able to hook in and, and relate to what's really happening in the world today. The real brightest people who are causing this revolution, uh, people like Bill Gates, uh, people like, uh, uh, you know, that uh, Mark Zuckerberg, Facebook, the Google boys, uh, all of these people, uh, and, uh, and this includes this Scott McNeely that I, we had dinner at his house. Uh, th these people are, in fact, he said that all of these people he knows that I just mentioned, and he says that we were so far ahead of any of our professors and teachers that we th was a waste of time to finish out our college education because we just thought they were so out of touch with reality. Can you imagine? And, we, and you'll see it today. How many of you have ever had a student come home and say, that teacher of ours you know, doesn't know what they're doing? Uh-huh. You know, that was happening when I was in school. And I had my kids come home and tell me about, oh, most ridiculous, uh, uh, you know. Kendra came home one time and, and one of her professors in the a, in a, uh, uh, religious uh, uh, classroom or studies had uh, misquoted the Bible. And she says, no, no, it doesn't say that, you know. Uh, and, you know he's, and he gave her... He, a bad grade as a result of her correcting him on what the Bible actually said. Uh, he said that money, he said the Bible says money is the root of all evil. She says, no, no, it's not true. She said, it's the love of money, not money. Money's not bad. It's when you love it so much that you sacrifice other, other parts of your life. So, so uh, anyway, but this is what's happening. So with that in mind, with that in mind, uh, I believe and I believe this about everybody in this room, and I believe it about the people that you and I will go out and contact uh, in the future. I believe, first of all, that everybody can start at the, where they are, where they are right now, today, and that where we are today is actually what we believe today about everything, about the world, 
we believe certain things and that we've been led to believe. And uh, we, you know, if you're here, you've probably escaped a lot of really negative influences because otherwise you wouldn't be here. You know, you would have been, you would have said no. You're, that negative influence that somebody peddled you along the way uh, and, and tried to convince you of, you've somehow shook it and you're here. So you're here because of what you believe and what I, I'm here because of what I believe today. And what I believe is a product of the input that's come into me. It's what I read. It's television programs I watch. It's the uh, people I listen to. Uh, it is uh, what I hear from uh, the media, what I hear from the news. It's, it's movies I watch. It's everything. It's the input. And whatever input has come in has made me what I am today. And what I am and what I believe today is not what I believed when I was 19 years old, <laughs> okay? I believed that I might be able to get a little business in my little town of Porterville, California, you know? That was a little, little country town, farm, a farming community, and I believed that. I didn't believe and couldn't believe anywhere near what Charlie and Alter are doing today, what Rory and Noel, I couldn't believe any of that. Okay, it wasn't possible. But I can believe today. Okay, now, I had to change, you know how many times I had to change my mind about things <laughs> on the way, you know? And you know how many lessons that I had to be taught, uh, some, some the hard way, uh, as, I, as I've gone through my life, and I'm lucky to, to have survived all that. But I point out that we are what we believe today, and I, I point to my background, but look, un, and until, and we're going to be that person until we believe something different. All right? And that's the key. As we become educated about our products, about our business, about self-improvement, as we get to know more and we hear more input like we heard today, people telling about the products, what they, what, people showing us how simple these products are to demonstrate and talk about. Actually showing you. You know, it's one thing to tell somebody. It's another thing to teach somebody, okay? Whatever you tell somebody, they're going to forget. Believe me. If you teach them, they'll remember a little bit. But if you show them, they will learn. They will learn and, and can incorporate it. That's real, real critical. So as we learn something different and believe something different, and we've had tremendous input here, it's this, the input that you and I have had here today is, is invaluable. It's worth a fortune if you could just grasp it, okay? And then once you believe that it's possible to improve your health and you start acting on it, once you believe it's possible to to build a business and you act on it, and once you believe that you can improve your skill sets in these areas plus self-improvement, positive thinking, goal setting, develop your why, all of these things, as you believe something differently, then this word called hope kicks in. Yes, I can change, there's hope for me. Hope is seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. You know, I, I, I weigh these things and I hear that this business will, has lasted for 40 years. I see a young team forming the Marco Taylors of, of the world along with uh, uh, other, other executives, you know, some older than others. And then you got old people like me all right, <laughs> me and Charlie, Alta, I don't know how you've married such a young woman, Charlie. I mean, uh, you know, we got the truth here today. Charlie, Charlie was 40 and what, you were 20 or something like that? And <laughs> I, I, I have a certain puff factor that has always been with me. It's plagued me my whole life. Uh, 
But anyway, as we, as we can believe, the, we get hope. Hope. Hope is, wow. And, and, and what, is, what does the Bible say about hope? You know, without hope, all men and women perish. With no hope, people give up. They die. Without hope, they take their own life. So hope forms. And, and then, you know, and then I believe that's one of the really key principles of, uh, of, of moving forward and making progress is to have hope and say, okay, can I talk to people? Can I learn this? Can I do a simple demonstration? Can I tell people about my business? Yeah. Do I have to be a great speaker? In front of the, you don't have to ever give a meeting in the front of the room. Just hang around people who give meetings, okay? <laughs> and get your people there, <laughs> you know, until you feel like giving one. You know, you can, you can write off of other people's gifts you know, you might just have the gift of being organized and getting there on time and getting the, the chairs set up and turning the lights on when they're supposed to. That might be your gift, organizational skills. You know, then use that gift, right? Your gift might be uh, just encouraging other people. Use that gift. Your gift might be, um, as I mentioned yesterday, it might be listening to other people, you know, that's a gift. Might be talking, you know. I've met people who have the gift of talking, nonstop talking, okay? <laughs> Don't try to shut those people up. That's a gift. <laughs> yeah. Let's have all, all get, let's give the talkers a big hand, you know? <laughs> huh? If you find one of those talkers, hang close to them. As they talk about, they'll, they'll turn up a lot of people for you. You know, a lot of prospects. They'll talk to anybody and everybody, you know. I travel, you've heard about uh, uh, the Krauses, Emma Jo Krause. Jerry Krause, very quiet and reserved and whatnot. And Emma Jo and Jerry have a large uh, neolife business. They built a big business they went to. They built it so solidly. Uh, when they went to Australia uh, and built their business there, opened up the Australia for the company, uh, their U.S. business kept on growing. It, it grew while they were gone. They were away 10 years. But I traveled with Emma Jo, and I tell you, she talks. Okay. And I, re I remember several embarrassing moments, but... I can remember one in particular right now. I'm standing, we're getting ready to check into a flight in the morning, okay, and I'm just standing waiting to check in. And, and Emma Jo is behind me, and there's another lady in front of me, okay. And Emma Jo, uh, you know, is, I'm not talking. Emma Jo then gets the lady's attention in, in uh, front of me. She says, uh, ma'am, she says, what are you doing uh, for cellular nutrition? I'm thinking, oh no, Emma Jo, not now, not here, you know. <laughs> and so she just starts talking and talking and talking and talking about, uh, and I'm thinking, oh, oh, please shut up, okay. <laughs> and first thing I know, she's got the name, she's got that. Uh, the lady doesn't even understand what cellular nutrition is, but you know, Emma jo has got a prospect because she just, I wouldn't talk to her, so she found the lady in front of me to talk to her, you know? And, uh, uh, and I, I, in those days, I was always trying to get Emma jo to tone it down a bit, but now I understand her gift, okay? Her gift. And uh, if you meet one of those people somewhere, many of you probably never seen one, but if you do, you make sure you uh, stick close to them. So, now, hope is very necessary, and then skill is necessary. Skill. All right? Skill is taking any task, anything you want to try to learn to do, and hopefully it's something you like to do, <clears throat> because that will be your greatest skills gift 
If you like to talk, you're going to talk all the time. You're going to get better at it. If you like to listen, you're going to listen a lot. You'll get better at it. If you encourage people a lot and you like to encourage people, you're going to get better at it. My mother was a champion. She had her fifth degree black belt in encouraging people. You know, she was, she would encourage everybody uh, all the time. And, uh, and you know, when she passed, it, she, there was this little, uh, co- little mountain country church that she attended and because my father had been sick for a few years with a stroke and whatnot, and she was his around-the-clock caregiver, uh, well, she wasn't out in the community. People lost contact with her almost, and, uh, and she wasn't even going to the little church, okay? Hardly ever. And when we planned her funeral, uh, you know, I just had a feeling, because my brother and sister, uh, we said, we're going to have a, some food after the service, and so... Uh, we were trying to say, count the relatives, count the people. We said, well, maybe 50 people will show up. Okay. Uh, and I had a feeling. I said, you know what? I don't think that's going to be enough. So I, let's go overboard. And so I ordered enough food for like 300 people. Okay. And uh, then I said, if we don't, if we don't, they don't use, eat the food, we'll give it away. All right. Then go to this little church. People started showing up, people she hadn't seen for 20, 20 years, 30 years. And when you normally at a, at a service will say, does anybody have anything they'd like to say? A line formed. <laughs> and people got up and started talking about the impact that she had on their lives going back 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 years. Uh, and telling specific stories. And it just blew everybody away. There wasn't a dry eye in the house. But here, this woman who had no career, had no anything except, and then I've many times mentioned how she encouraged me. Boy, was she a champion encourager, you know? But that's a skill set. Well, you have to develop that skill if, you, if your gift is encouraging and you never encourage anybody, you won't be very good at it. All right? So you develop your major skill and then, of course, some minor skills. You know, you might be able to listen and then talk once in a while. <laughs> you know? So <clears throat> that's, that's great. Now, and then the more you practice the things that you have, need to learn, you will get better at it. And then you will actually enjoy more doing that skill. I just came off of the Silverado yacht a week ago with some Mexican distributors and my wife, Susan, and uh, I took a photo, so I have it here, showing her and the captain of the boat. And uh, my wife likes to do puzzles. Anybody here like to do puzzles? Okay, well, she is a champion puzzler, all right? And she would stay up, she, they stayed up one, two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning working on these complicated puzzles. And they're so good at it. I'm, I'm looking at these puzzles, I get up. I can't find, in three days there, I didn't find one piece that fit. <laughs> Not one piece. Now, I didn't spend a lot of time because I, I didn't, I, I just, I'm trying to figure out, I, I wanted to grab a piece and put it somewhere, you know, so that contribute. And look and look and look and look. And then I'd say, you know, no, I'm not even going to try. And I'd go away. But my mind was working, trying to figure it out, okay? Now, puzzling is not a gift I have, all right? And it would take me a long time to even make a little progress. She can put together complicated puzzles. But guess what? We took a cruise on one of the big cruise ships and she got a puzzle out on a table up there in a certain part of this lounge and started this puzzle. And she then attracted other puzzlers on that uh, cruise ship. And they formed a puzzler club up there. And uh, then this thing, around the clock, people would go in at night after she went to bed. They'd continue to work. She'd get up in the morning. Oh, look at that. It's a little further along. And the whole, there was a group of them, probably 20, 20 of them that found each other and got those puzzles done, all right? Now, my point is that that kind of uh, 
that kind of skill, once you get it, you should see the joy that she gets out of doing a puzzle. Well, that's another principle that we must have in our businesses. We must, yesterday Charlie mentioned several times when it talks, he said, I just have fun. I did this and that. I just have fun. I just love this. Thing. I love fun. You know what? As you build your team, have fun. Get together. You know, go visit each other's homes. Get to know the families, right? Talk about your goals and dreams and enjoy doing the things you have to learn to do. Just have fun. Joy is a principle that will cause you, and you know what? Let's carry that joy one step further because joy, if you have joy in your business, in your life, you are so happy when one of your team makes progress. You get as much or more joy out of that than you do yourself. If that is not happening in your team, in your life, then that tells you and tells me that you don't really care about other people and you won't make it. You have to get to where you're so happy when somebody else wins and that's part of the joy. Right now in California, if you get a chance to, I watched it when I arrived here, by the way, on the television uh, on, at night when I got here, there was a basketball game going on uh, in California, and the local basketball team is the champions, you know, national NBA champions last year, and they've run away with everything this year. They're called the Golden State Warriors. And if you know anything about basketball, it's uh, five players on the court at a time and their team and whatnot. And there are usually, there is one player on the team who's a real star and then a lot of supporting players. This team... They get so much pleasure out of seeing their fellow players do good that they don't try to be a show-off. They, they hand the ball off. Can somebody else make the point, even when they could? And, and they're so happy seeing everybody win. And they're such a team. It's a joy. You can see they just love the game. In fact, the coach, when he was interviewed uh, on television after the game, he said, I teach my players to have a lot of fun and take joy in the game. And that's why we are winning over everybody. Okay, now think about that. You want your team to win? Your team is your business, right? Make sure there's joy there. Joy for each other's accomplishment. Joy for your own progress. And then this all leads to the thing which, is, which I think is the key. Nothing great happens unless there's passion. You have to be passionate about everything. And you know what? You can, as, as, you, as you have hope, as you develop skills, and I, I'm talking to me too, as we enjoy what we're doing, as we're proud of what we're doing, okay, now we just start to be more passionate about it. You see this with anything. If you are a, uh, you know, any, any skill set you might have, as you learn more, develop more, get better at it, you will get